Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the new Creators app using the Sony a7 IV because I just updated my Sony a7 IV to firmware version 2.0. All right, so let's just get right into it. All right guys, if you need help updating your firmware, I created a dedicated video on that already and I'll have that linked below the video. So check out that video. That'll walk you through the process of upgrading your Sony a7 IV from whatever version you're at up to version 1.1. Once you're at version 1.1, you are ready to go to version 2.0 and uh, that'll get you up to speed to where I'm at, where this video kind of starts. So I got the Creators app here. I'm just gonna click on that. And here's what it looks like when you first turn it on. So what I gotta do is connect it to the Sony a7 IV. So I'm gonna select, and by the way, notice how there's this home screen, camera screen, folder screen, and then there's this other option here where you can share photos and stuff like that. It's almost like a forum type thing that they set up here. What we're gonna wanna do is hit connect camera. So I'm just gonna click that. And now what it says, do you see the QR code on the camera screen? So I don't see the QR code on the screen right now, so I'm just gonna click next. And it says select the camera that you would like to connect. I wanna connect the a7 IV, so I'm gonna select that guy. And then it says from the camera's menu, go to network, PC remote, smartphone connection. So let me go to the menu. All right, so in the network area, I'm gonna go up here to connect slash PC remote, then go over to the right, smartphone connection and then this screen is gonna pop up. So I'm just gonna check this box to, so it doesn't show this next time, and then I'm gonna hit connect to smartphone. So launch the app and start pairing. So here we go, I'm just gonna click connect. And now, because I hit connect on the device here, it's telling me to tap OK. So this is like this handshake process. So now you gotta hit OK on the camera. Now I'm gonna have to hit pair on the smart device, which is an iPhone 12 mini, by the way. That's what I'm using. So if it doesn't look like this, that's because I'm using an iPhone 12. Uh, the newer iPhones, this might look slightly different, for example. Now it's telling me over here on the camera, connected device, iPhone, correct, click OK and I'm just gonna click next on the smart device. And now that it says that the camera is looking for an access point, it wants to connect the camera to a Wi-Fi network. Now, this is for uploading to the cloud and things like that, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna skip that step because I don't wanna, I don't wanna upload anything to the cloud. All I wanna do is remote control the camera and also transfer photos from the camera to my smart device. If you guys wanna to upload to Sony's cloud and use those other features that I showed in the beginning of this video, you can connect to your home Wi-Fi network if you want. That's up to you, but like I said, I'm gonna skip that for now. So the camera setup is completed. You are now almost there to use the app, so that's cool. So I'm just gonna click next. And now here we are. So check this out. So now we have the option to do a bunch of stuff. And if you notice on the top of the screen, on the iPhone here, we have a plus icon if you wanna add more cameras. Next to that, you have the cloud creators where you can sign in and stuff like that. And then on the top right, this is where settings are. Just has the Wi-Fi setting there. And then down here on the bottom, again, I already showed you, you have home, which you know gives you a bunch of options here for the cloud stuff and Im images that you imported previously will be on the top there. I'm just gonna go back to camera here. All right guys, check this out. I'm gonna put the camera in the lab behind me and we're gonna do some remote shooting and then I will show you how to import those photos that we took in the lab. So let's do that. Camera is in the lab. You can see behind me right here. All right, so I'm just gonna click on the remote shooting option and it's gonna ask me, do I wanna join? I'm gonna click yes, join. So the Wi-Fi on the camera is turning on and now my phone is connecting to the camera's Wi-Fi. That's what's going on there. And it can also use Bluetooth and stuff as well. Um, so it uses a combination of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And now notice this, it says, it is necessary to set Bluetooth to off in the smartphone when movement or shooting screen is not fluid. So if you're trying, if the screen is really choppy, you can actually go in and shut the Bluetooth off and it'll work a little better over just Wi-Fi. So right now I have touch tracking enabled. So I just wanna show you, if you go into the menu here really quick on the bottom left, click menu. And then if you go to touch function in shooting, this is important. You have to have it on touch tracking for this to work. If it's on touch focus or off, this won't work. 
So now that I have touch tracking enabled, I can actually click on like the back of the screen and it'll focus back there. You see that? So this is how you would go about doing remote shooting. Like if you want to take a self portrait, for example, you can be in front of the camera and then just hit the tracking right on your face. The camera will then focus on your face and then you can go ahead and take the photo just like that. So that's how that works. So now if we go back here to the dollar bill, all right, now it's focused on the dollar bill. It's just showing me the photo. All right, so now it's focused on the dollar bill. And if we take the photo, there you go. And now it's gonna automatically by default copy this image to the phone, just so you guys are aware. But I just wanna show you a little bit better how this app works. So you can go around here and pretty much touch any of these settings and change them. So I'm in aperture priority mode. You can go in here and you can change this to whatever mode you want. And notice you have video, S and Q, all sorts of good stuff like that. So you can use all those modes and you have auto white balance. So you can change your white balance. You have the type of focus mode. So you can put it in continuous shooting if you're tracking moving subjects with photography. I have it in a uh, single shot right now. Now, of course, you can change the aperture by clicking the F number. And now you can just click the arrow to step through the aperture or you can just drag the bar. And notice how the aperture is changing on the little display there. You could see how the depth of field got larger. The lights are much smaller. And now you can see those, you know, bouquet balls look pretty cool. Now you can also turn the device and have the screen work this way. If you would prefer in a landscape mode and you can hit display to change the way it looks as well. Now also going down here, you have exposure compensation. You can change that if you want while in aperture priority mode, you have ISO metering mode here. Now this playback button will actually bring you into the photos that copied over via the app. It won't bring you into the playback of the actual camera. Just so you know, you have to go into view photos in order to see all the photos on the memory card. Um, that's not what this little icon is bringing you to, just so you're aware. Now, if I go into menu here, I just wanted to show you a couple of other settings. There's a lot of stuff here. You got raw format, so you can select raw quality if you want. Your movie mode formats are in here as well. Now, if you do want to record movies and transfer them to your smart device, you can't go higher than 100 megabit. 100 megabit is the highest you can go and have the files copy over, just so you're aware. Um, now you got your date and time set up and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Now, another thing I wanted to show you though, is down here uh, on the smartphone settings, you have mirror mode. Now, a lot of times people ask me, you know, my face looks reversed, how can I fix that? This is where you would go to fix that and it'll just flop the camera the opposite way. I mean, you have grid line if you want, you can enable grid line or you can select different options there. I like rule of thirds though. And then emphasize record display, I turn that on. So when you hit record, a big red box will pop up so you can see that. So now you can see the rule of thirds on the screen, which is pretty cool, nice feature. So let me just switch this to video mode really quick. I'm just gonna put it in intelligent auto video mode. And that's what it looks like. And I'm just gonna hit record. So now I'm recording video and you could see that record window popped up. And now if I click back here on the background, it's gonna focus on the background while recording video. This is crazy powerful guys. Focused on the, do on the uh, quarter there. And now back to the dollar bill. I'll just hit stop recording. All right, so that's pretty much how remote shooting works. And like I said, it's pretty straightforward. It's um, not quite as hard as you might think. And this app seems to work pretty darn good. It seems a little more stable than the Imaging Edge app, I gotta say. So when you exit out of there, it's gonna warn you that it's gonna end remote shooting. And it's like, yeah, that's fine. All right, so remote shooting is now done. So now let's go and view and import the photos. And these are like, separate kind of apps within this app. So you can't do both at the same time. So I'm just gonna click view and import. There we go. So now I'm connected, basically looking at the camera's memory card for all intents and purposes. Now note this, you can only copy videos in the following formats. So just be aware of that. And also if you copy these files over to your phone, they won't necessarily play on your phone. It depends what kind of phone you have what kind of software version is on the phone and so forth, because these are, you know, kind of advanced formats and all phones can't necessarily read those formats. So keep that in mind. The iPhones and Apple products are pretty powerful. So usually they work, but not always. So I'm just gonna click okay. 
And again, we can go into the lab photos that I just took and you can select them and copy them over if you want. Now notice how this video is grayed out. So that's probably because it's the wrong format and it's not allowing me to copy over it. But anyways, if you scroll through here, you can see I got photos from the other day. So if I go, so let's see, I'll just select this guy and I'll select this guy. And now all you gotta do is on the bottom here, there's a little button that shows an arrow with the smartphone. If you click that, it's gonna ask you using this setting, it's only gonna import two megapixel images. So by default, I have the camera set to raw quality. So by default, it is gonna convert these images to JPEG at two megapixel. And honestly, that's what I want. I want that. I don't want a full resolution image on my phone. I just want it on my phone so I could see it, possibly share it on social media. I'm not doing editing on my device. If you guys are doing hardcore editing using an iPad Pro or something like that, you're gonna want original selected here. So again, it just depends on what you're doing. Like I said, for my purposes, I want it set this way. So I'm just gonna do that. So it's set to two megapixel, and I'm just gonna click this little arrow. It's again, comes up with this warning, click okay. And now it copied the two items over. So now if I go back here, I can exit out of this and it's gonna disconnect. Um, but if I go to this folder here on the bottom, underneath the setup, you can see the photos are here. So now these are the photos I just copied over. And if you hit information, it'll give you a lot more information on the photo. What lens you were using and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Here's just another one. I was testing out the 55 millimeter f1.8 Zeiss lens. Now also, if you go into the photo app on the phone right here, photos, um, I do have the photos and you can see them up here. Now, because I took these a while ago, it goes in date order on the iPhone so that I had to scroll up a little bit to find these but here's some of the photos and here's that lens I was using. All right guys, so that pretty much sums up how this app works. Now it's pretty powerful and it works pretty good. Now it will occasionally glitch up. Every once in a while it'll disconnect or if you try to go out from viewing photos and you wanna go back to remote shooting, you have to disconnect and reconnect. One time though, the app did hang up and it wouldn't connect to my camera. So the app was responding, but it just wouldn't connect for some reason. So I just closed the app and reopened it and then it worked fine. So just so you're aware if that happens to you, but I gotta say this is definitely more stable than the Imaging Edge app, which would get hung up a little bit more often. All right guys, that about wraps up this video. I really hope you got what you were looking for and I really hope you try uh, this new app out. So if you have the a7 IV and I'm willing to bet any new camera that Sony comes out with in the future is gonna be using this creator's app as well. So keep that in mind. All right, take care guys, have a great day.